For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes him should not perish but have eternal life. A verse that everyone knows. Your grandmother, your mother, your father, maybe even your dog or cat even know this verse. Almost everybody probably knows if you're a Christian. Probably the first verse that you ever memorize if you memorize any of them. Such a popular verse. You see it all the time, but what does that verse mean? You, you see it everywhere. I mean, and almost everyone knows it by heart at this point. What does it mean that God so loved the world? What is this one and only son? What is this everlasting life? What is this world? Let's answer that question, shall we? So let's just break this verse down one by one. For God so loved the world. So what is this world? Is we talking about the actual ground itself? Are we talking about the dirt outside right now? Is that the earth or the world that God is talking about? No. Or John, since it's written in John. No, that's not what he means. The world is people. Everyone who's ever been born and who will be born. God so loved the world that includes me and you. Basically, you could put your name into that verse and it'll still make sense. Because the world is just everyone. People that you like, you don't like, your family members, the people over there across the street, the people at school, everybody, everybody in the world, politicians, God so loved everybody. See what I mean? That he gave his one and only son. Who is this one and only son? Hmm. Well, this one and only son, we're talking about Jesus right here. What does it mean he gave his one and only son? As you may know, Jesus did die on the cross, but... What was the purpose of that? Why did Jesus die on the cross? And sure you may say because he got backstabbed and people wanted to kill him. But there's more to it than that. You are correct. But there's more to it than that. What is the what is the meaning behind this death on the cross? Well, in that moment, God has just saved the world from their sins. So we are all sinful people. We all are. We all sin in many different ways. Some may lie. Some may indulge in sexual morality. We all sin. We all do. That's We all have sin a part of us. And because of our sin, we cannot be in God's presence. Because God, he does not like sin. And if God really wanted to, he can cut us all loose and just let us go for ourselves in this dark world. Imagine that. Imagine if God never had his hand on this world. Imagine how dark and how chaotic it would really be. You want a bit of an idea? Go read Revelations. So God sent Jesus down on earth to save his people from their sins. And that is written throughout the New Testament, even the Old Testament. Some verses include Matthew 1.21, a verse I like for Christmas time, about he shall save his people from their sins. That is an example. There's plenty of other verses. I just can't remember them right now off the top of my head. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember more of the Old Testament, but I can't remember the exact verses. Maybe they'll be on the screen. Who knows? And so, that whoever believes in him should not perish. Well, that's kind of two part. Maybe we'll just start with to whoever believes in him. What does it mean that you believe in him? It means you have faith in Jesus as salvation, as your savior. You have faith that he is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to get forgiveness of sins. That is believing in him. Okay, see what I mean? Should not perish. So what does that mean? No, I said earlier that God does not allow sin, and it's basically the opposite of him. It's just God does not like it at all. Well, perishing means that we will be eternally separated from God without a Savior. An eternal separation, other words, hell, as you may know, lake of fire, and it's not a place you want to be, especially for eternity, because eternity never ends. And I'm sure you don't want to be in a place that's full of tormenting forever. But there is a way, and that's through Jesus. And let me, let me just finish the verse. Let me just finish it. But have eternal life. What is eternal life? What does that part of the verse mean? Eternal life means that we are not going to die. As in, we're not going to be eternally separated from God. We will instead be with God forever, for all eternity, living in perfect peace, harmony, no more sin. Ah, I could recite Revelations. What verse is that? Revelations. 
22? Is it 21? Which one is it? 22, 21 is like uh, verses 3 to 4. Well, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it basically means that eternal life there'll be no more weeping, uh, crying, no more pain, suffering, or sorrow. Basically, perfection, and we'll be with God and Jesus forever and ever and ever because it is eternal life. And that's where you want to be because no one really wants to be in hell for eternity. And why? It's much better to be with God. And you can be with God for all eternity because He loves us so much. He loves you very much. And He wants to be with you for all eternity. And He made a way for us through Jesus because He is our only way to His life because God wants to be with us. He chose to do this. Bear in mind, He really could have just left us on our own to murdering each other and causing chaos and stuff. But instead, he loves us so much, very, very much, that he dies for our own sake. Imagine just dying for some group of people who absolutely hate you and abhor you. That's basically what we are without God. We hate him, abhor him, rebel against him. And God sees that, but he still loves us. He loves us so much, he would die for us. That tells you a lot about God, doesn't it? And he really wants to be with you. He wants to be reconciled with you. That's that's kind of how I looked at the whole Bible itself. It's basically a book of reconciliation. If that's a word. It's basically a book of God trying to reconcile himself with mankind. And it just starts from the beginning. With Genesis, you see the fall of man. And ever since the fall, God has always seeked out reconciliation with mankind. And he has made it through Jesus. And it's a free gift. Accept him. Because it is the only way to have everlasting life and to be with God forever. So that is John 3.16. Hope it made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if it made sense and helped you. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.